The ocean that we always see is almost always blue and clear. Do you think the most marine creatures can see clear blue water too? In recent years, the problem of sea pollution by plastic garbage is getting more serious all around the world. Many people are worried that tons of debris in the ocean damages the home of sea creatures and put them in danger. We must reduce ocean garbage now. However, one Japanese survey shows there are a few activities people can easily find and join in order to reduce marine debris. I consider this is a major reason why we can't address this problem. Then, what can we do? Here are my three suggestions. First, we should spread group cleanup activities on beaches and riverbanks. There are activities where many people get together cleaning beaches and competing for points by picking up litter. We need more activities like these. Many people from children to adults can easily join and work together. Second, some people don't feel comfortable with working in groups even though they are interested in cleanup activities. In that case, they can individually work some activities to reduce plastic waste, the source of marine pollution. For example, reducing, reusing, and recycling plastic products, and picking up plastic garbage on beaches and riverbanks. Finally, we often see plastic smart campaign on social networking services. It posts about activities to reduce plastic waste with the hashtag PlasticSmart. These days, we increasingly use SNS. If more people find PlasticSmart campaign and post their activities on the website, it will spread more and hopefully more people will work on reducing plastic garbage. We can't solve the problem of marine debris with just the power of one person. However, we can make changes by bringing individual efforts together. Please don't say, I can't do anything when you see the photo of a dead silver trap in a plastic bag. I believe there are many things we can each do in our own way. Let's all take action to save the vast blue ocean. Do you know much about the martial art kendo? I think many people have heard of it, but they don't know much about it. Kendo originated in Japan almost 300 years ago. The player wear hakama, scarves like pants, protective armor, and use two-handed bamboo sword to strike each other one and one. This art practiced by boys and girls, men and women. Some people say that Kendo has a negative image, like gear smells and the armor is heavy. That's right. There are so many things that I don't like about these sports. So, a question rose. Why do I spend many hours every day practicing it at my school club and even take extra candle lessons? A few days pass 
while I couldn't find the answer. Then the candle tournament arrived. I was so nervous thinking about how, how I could win the match. My opponent was a player I had never beaten. I had butterflies in my stomach. It was a long and close game, but finally, in an instant, I hit my opponent's body and won a match. I was so happy that I couldn't explain my feeling of achievement. But I found the answer to my question. I was able to endure the hard training and unpleasant things to achieve this moment. I remember my teacher telling me that you can't win in candle matches unless you practice over and over again and that the more you practice, the stronger you will become. I've learned the hard work and making an effort to do the same things again and again always pays off. So I will keep trying very hard and do my best. I believe in the future I will be stronger than I am now. Thank you for listening. What's your treasure? A smartphone, accessories, your friends, or your family? My treasure is this long hair, which I've been growing at for 13 years. I've never had a haircut since I was born. Thanks to my hair, many people talk to me. For example, how wonderful, you have long hair. Some people even say, why don't you try to get into Guinness World Records? I'm glad that someone has an interest in my hair, and I feel that my hair makes a connection with others. However, now I'm having difficulties with my hair. I'm on the basketball team in middle school. I usually put my hair up in a bun when I play basketball, but my hair is too long to make it a bun. So it takes a long time to do my hair every day. Also, my hair often gets messy when I play basketball, but I can't just worry about that constantly. That's when I wonder, how easy it would be if my hair were short. However, it takes a lot of courage for me to cut this hair, so I can't make up my mind. Should I get a haircut or not? My feelings are wavering. By the way, speaking of long hair, probably the word hair donation pops into your head. Hair donation is an activity that makes medical wigs out of donated hair, and the wigs are given to people in need. Nowadays, hair donations are becoming common. Of course, I think I'd like to donate my hair. According to JHDNC, Japan Hair Donation and Charity Nonprofit Organization, the hair you donate must be 31 centimeters or longer. 31 centimeter long hair can be a part of a short hair wig, and if you donate over 60 centimeter long hair, it can be a part of a super long hair wig. My goal is to donate over 60 centimeter long hair. Although I'm still in two minds, whether or not to get a haircut, I'm going to grow out my hair carefully until that day comes. I believe my hair can make someone happy. I hope my treasure, this hair, 
become someone's treasure someday. Thank you for listening.